don't know how scary it is starting a painting. Maybe do. My work isn't as, you know, simple. It's not one or another. It's not, it's, it's not sci-fi, but it is. It's not surreal, but it is. It's, it's not metaphysical, but it is, or new age, you know, but it is, uh, you know, one area always sees my work as, as another area. It's like, I'm always in this, this, this fall, you know, within the cracks of, of all these different genres because your work is too commercial and it's like well it's not commercial i can't sell it to these other places so so what so what do you do it's like an, another 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 crack in my work i want people to uh be able to walk away with with, with a sense of uh an, an, an otherness that uh that maybe perhaps they haven't had before uh, uh, a sense of looking at the world a little bit differently, uh, to look around them a little bit differently than, than they might have before, to look at uh, an, an object and sort of seeing the other side of it, um, to see a relationship with, with all these things that uh, we have around us and uh, these connections that there are amongst uh, ourselves as, as human beings um, to the greater world, you know, other living beings, animals, and figures. You know, I can put him on the exalted plane of, uh, of Da Vinci. I know he would probably uh, wince at that. You know, he's more of a man of, uh, of the people. Andrew could be, uh, the, you know, the first person on Mars. I mean, and he'll probably build the machine, you know, for under $300, too, I mean. Well, like I say, he was kind of this mystery man. Everyone had these different ideas of, of who he was and what his past was and what he did. He's, you know, he's pushing himself like, like most artists do. Well, Andrew can do whatever he wants. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about Andrew. I ran to him in the street and he said he wanted to build a time machine, which is you know, unbelievable and ridiculous and so inspirational.
His work ethic is unbelievable. He won't eat, he won't sleep, he won't bathe, he won't, you know, all these things that we, we, we do. I mean, well, if he's got a five day, you know, window to get something done, he'll be done on that fourth day just so that he can like, you know, do some modifications at the last minute. Yeah, you're done. So he's literally has this van that is called the Museum of New Ideas that he's kind of retrofitted and put in this crazy set of stairs and this wooden door that opens up and it he can basically pull into a town and pull out the stairs and you know up with the the door door almost like the beginning of a theater show and you know just reveal whatever he's got inside which can be a whole number of uh, different things maybe his giant camera maybe his uh, photocopy uh, projector one of those things I would say uh, definitely I built the truck for the camera feeling like there was an opportunity if I had a truck that I could put the camera in and it was a mobile dark room and I was going to travel to all these locations and surely there was um, more than could that could be done with it than just me taking photographs. Um, I think it, there's a, a hearkening back in some ways to circus and also um, the history of museum in some ways as being these sort of cabinet of curiosities a little bit and um, uh, creating something that seems a little mysterious um, potentially confusing or so developing the truck into a museum gallery um, and something that facilitates teaching of workshops means that I can go to a community engage the community interact with the community um, as well as potentially taking photographs in in that area Yet here, Laertes, aboard, aboard, for shame. The wind sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are stayed for. Alas, poor follicles, I grew them well, a thing of infinite nest. No, I'm Jewish. <laughs> I am a Jew. I'm also a gunfighter. I just love what I do and I owe it to this art form that's been so good to me. You know, there's so many stories from my cab driving, but one in particular stands out. It was a very hot summer day. The windows are down in my cab. I'm reading a book or the racing form, whatever. All of a sudden, a passenger door opens. Tall, lanky guy gets in. He puts his long leg on the dash of my car. He's wearing cowboy boots. And his arm goes around my shoulder, stops at my neck with a little pressure. Then he says to me, I'm Wolf Larsen. I've sailed the high seas. I'm also a gunfighter. Then he reaches towards his boot, and I'm going, uh-oh. Then he withdraws his hand, and I go, 
I said, okay, Wolf, so where would you like to go? I'm going to the Maryland Hotel. Off we go towards the hotel, and still with his hand on my neck, he turns to me and he says, Did you know I was a gunfighter? I said, yes, Wolf, and you also sailed the high seas. And he puts pressure on me and he says, How did you know? I said, Wolf, you told me. And he goes, Oh. We get to the parking lot of the Maryland Hotel. He pays me, gets out of the cab, walks a few steps away, and he turns back and he says to me, I think I'm going to kill myself. Then he walks away, only to return into the window, and he says, Almost. <laughs> wow. Wolf. Okay, you're doing it. You're doing it. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. It's working. It's really working. We've now achieved telekinetic interrelation. Like the Vulcan mind melt. Shut up. Wow, where'd you pick this up? In Tibet, on a Barney Chirac deal. Yeah. So now we go to the next step. Which is? We go into your unconscious. Don't I get to see yours? Hey, who's the highly evolved one around here? Just let go of your mind. Right, I'll give it a shot. I'm starting to see all sorts of amazing things. No trees, you see, you see the birds and yeah, the nature, wow. and blue skies. Mutual of Omaha, man. Oh. Hey, there's a cute furry little oh, bunny. Oh, psychedelic roadkill. What could that mean? We'll analyze later. Wow, this is coming from my brain. Okay, now this is animals and, and, and landscape. Cartoon. Hey, did you see Yogi Bear a second ago? What's with the dancing beaver? I don't know, I like him. Do, 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 do. Oh, no. No, no, no. Ooh. Oh, why'd you do that? I don't know. Must have been an unconscious act. You're not in touch with your hairy man. You said you'd leave the analysis until later. What's Gordon Pinsent doing here? Leave it. I can't make any sense out of this. Try slowing your head down a bit. Yeah, but all this crap is in my head. Oh, get Pinsent out of here. He's like a bad trip, okay? Don't worry about it. Probably you had one of those classic rowdy man nightmares. Oh, wow. Flip side of Pinsent. So what's happening to our bodies anyway? I don't know. Go check. Never mind. We'll get back to them eventually. Let's see. Uh, we, we got to John Major. Mm. Roger Whitaker. <laughs> what's next, Sandler and Young? I hope not. What? What's... A Okay, what's my wife doing in your head? I don't know, it's your head too. No, it's your head. <laughs> Two heads are better than one. Let's do some more. No. Come on. You're going too far. I'm really into it. You don't know what happens when you play in the astral depths. I think your toe's in my mouth. I'm going down. No, no, Down, no. down, down. Cool it. I want to see everything. I want to see the whole universe. There's so many in the universe.